What's going on everybody, it's Charles. Today I'm gonna to walk you through the very basics of using the VCDS scan tool. Today we're gonna to be using my 2019 Mark 7.5 Golf R, and I'm gonna walk you through step by step the very most basic stuff. We're gonna talk about address words, measured value blocks, adaptations, basic settings, and a handful of other things. Now if you're a VCDS or VAGCOM, as some of us used to call it, expert, you probably know most of this. However, I really recommend hanging out and watching this video because if you can pick up one little tip to make your job or your life as a DIYer easier, it's gonna be well worth it. Now to be clear, this is not a sponsored video. This is just a tool that I've used since 2005. I, I find it to be one of the best VW Audi scan tools out there. Now at this point in time, the software is free. You just buy the cable from VCDS. I'll be sure to link that down in the description. They have a couple of different options for you guys, depending on what your needs are. So with that said, let's dive into the scan tool and I'll show you how it works. First, let's go ahead and start by opening up our VCDS. Right now we're on 19.6.1. You always wanna make sure that your VCDS is as up to date as it possibly can be. Here on our main screen, we have a couple of options. Select control module, auto scan, service reminder interval reset, OBD2 functions, applications, and our programming options. We can also click the about and learn a little bit more about Rostec. Now we are gonna be working with the key on engine off today. You can use this with the key on engine running, but since we're in the garage, we clearly don't wanna do that. If you're gonna be key on engine off, you wanna get a battery maintainer on it so that we don't kill the battery. Before going into any of the options on this main screen here, let's turn the ignition on and everything else off. So radio, air conditioning, lights, turn it all off. We don't wanna have any more loads on the system than we absolutely have to have. Now, depending on what year your car is, is gonna depend on what we're gonna do next. While we can auto scan pretty much any car, the ones that are not CAN bus cars, so about 2005 and older, take forever. If you have a newer car than that, then let's use the auto scan with the gateway installation list. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on auto scan. Because we have a CAN bus car, it should auto detect what kind of car it is. If we don't, we can click from the drop down menu. Remember, this is a worldwide tool, so there may be some things that we don't have here in the US listed. So here's our main screen. We have a couple of options. We can click start. That's gonna interrogate every module and give us the codes and allow us to either save or print that. That's a great way to do it. But what I almost always do first is I click the gateway installation list. This is going to just give me a snapshot of all the modules that may or may not have any codes. And it's super fast, so it's a really quick look into what the car is seeing. So here we go, here's our gateway installation list. We can see that no modules are listed in red, which is good, that means we don't have any fault codes. If we had a fault code, the module would be highlighted in red. These are all the modules that the gateway knows that the car has installed in it. The numbers here on the left are called address words. Each system has an address word. So the ECM is going to always, always, always be address word 01. The transmission computer, whether it's a DSG or whether it's a regular automatic, is always going to be 2. The ABS module is always going to be three. The instrument cluster is probably always going to be 17. And these are listed right here to the side. If we were to go back and go to select control module, we can identify that control module based on that number. So we see here 01 engine, 02 trans, 03 brakes, 05 access start. Now back in our gateway installation list, we can do a couple of things. We can hit the start key right here, and that's going to scan all the modules and check all the faults. So when we look at that gateway installation list, it's telling us whether a fault exists or not. It's the gateway that's looking for those faults. When we click on starting the actual scan, now we're talking to the individual modules, each one at, one at a time, rather than just the gateway to see if it sees any issues. Ideally, and almost every time, those two things match perfectly. I'm sure there's a case where you could have it where they won't match. This is also good because we actually extract more information from each module than just whether it has a fault or not. We can also save this, copy it, print it out. If we're dealing with a customer or something like that, we can have that on file so that we have their information saved. Also, if you get into a really weird issue and you want to get some help from Rostec, this is the kind of scan you're gonna have to do. I would not recommend doing this on an 045678 Toreg or Phaeton or probably an Audi A8. Uh, it will take like 100 hours. All right, so that's all done scanning. Now we have a little bit more information. We see all of the modules that it actually scanned. And in addition to just the generic list, we have our actual module breakdowns. So we can see our 
ECM information here, TCM, hardware number coding, software level, all the good information. Once we do that, and once we have that information, we want to save it. You can save it as whatever you want. And typically this is stored under this PC, Windows, Rostec, VCDS, and logs. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward stuff. Let's go into the module and start digging around in a module and walk through that. We don't even have to back out and go to that main screen. If we double click the module, it'll bring us right there. It also will bring you directly to the fault code screen, which is totally fine. Right? Thankfully we have no fault code stored here. Let's hit done, go back. Here's our main module screen. We have our main module information up here at the top. Now we have two different sections. We have basic functions and advanced functions. If you're only using the basic functions, this does not count on the VIN limited VCDS cables towards your number of VINs. It's only the advanced functions, so keep that in mind. So we talk about fault codes, that's pretty self-explanatory. If there were any faults stored in the system, we would be able to see that here. Click done, go back. Support codes is not available. Readiness, this is gonna check our readiness status. Are all our monitors passed so that we can get a state inspection? I've cleared these since driving the car, so mine are not set. Our advanced ID gives us deep, deep, deep information about that module. So we can save this as well. It'll save it to that same log we already started, advanced measured values. Stored in measured value blocks is the information the module sees. ECM is a great example because this is where we're gonna look at RPM, speed, throttle, coolant temperature, air to intake temperature. All the things that the ECM sees, we can see in our measured value blocks. There are a couple of different protocols. We have our old protocol, which is just measured values. That was great because they were around forever and a lot of us techs knew some of the numbers. We knew that 32 was fuel trim. We knew that 33 was oxygen sensor. And that was really great because we could access it super fast. The newer protocol in many modules is called UDS. And rather than having measured value block 32 say, we have these IDs. Look at this ID number here, IDE0011. We're still able to access and monitor this information, it's just labeled differently. The good thing is, at least on the factory scan tool side, is we actually started getting information of what, what these numbers were, but then it came along with a pain in the butt way to access them. So the big key here, if you wanna find something, is to use the search box. You can scroll through all those values if you want, but I find that to be silly and I like to just use the search. Another tip on the search, we have to be creative on how we search. If we're looking for RPM, say, we may not find it in that search box. We need to be thinking what else would be called RPM. Maybe it's called engine speed rather than RPM. Maybe we call intake air temperature sensor IAT, but it may just call it intake temperature. Since we were talking about RPM, let's see what happens. So now we have crankshaft speed, camshaft speed, and misfires, awesome. Let's see what it happens when we type in engine speed. So here we have both of them. We have RPM and engine speed. And they'll probably give us the same value. So let's just for fun look at a couple of things. We have engine speed here, we have coolant temperature, we have vehicle speed, and we have, let's just click a couple of these. When I click them, you can see that it brings them over to here. Because our car's not running, we have no engine speed. 30 degrees Celsius coolant temperature because the car hasn't ran, it's been sitting. We're not driving it hasn't started, and then our throttle position is 15.7%. Just for fun, let's see what happens when I push the throttle pedal. So there we go, we can look right at all of our information. If we were driving the car or had it running, we could monitor misfires. All this information right here is what we can look at. And there's so much stuff that we can see right here. Look at all this information, just for days and days. Now, not every module is gonna have all this information that we can access. The ECM is one that we can access a lot, which is really, really cool. So let's say we wanted to prove out misfires like we did on that video where the piston was broken. We would add our misfire counter, and we can just add these here. Let the car run and see which cylinder is actually misfiring. We can also save these, this information to our log that we've already started. Now, one of the most amazing features of VCDS is our ability to graph this information. For things like misfires, we can see that pretty easily. If the number's moving, it's misfiring. But what about something like wheel speed from the ABS system? We may not be able to see tiny fluctuations 
in the number because it's changing. So what we can do is we can hit this graph button right here. So now we have our information listed, our RPM, our coolant temperature sensor, our vehicle speed, our throttle. I'm going to add this one here. So here's our throttle right here. Rather than watching the number, the individual number like we did before, watch what happens when I hit the throttle pedal. We can see on our graph when I hit the pedal and then let off of it and then hit the pedal and stepped it down, then hit the pedal and let off of it, then stepped it up and held it and then let off of it. Probably one of like the three best features of VCDS. You do need to know what you're looking at and you do need to know what you're looking for before diving into these values. Otherwise you're just looking at numbers. Let's go ahead and go back. So that pretty much sums up our safe. We're just looking at the information from the vehicle. When we move over to advanced functions, now we're interacting with the vehicle. Now it's like a two-way thing, okay? So we can go to several things like basic settings and we'll start here. So in our basic settings screen, we have this drop-down menu. This is all the things that we're gonna be able to do in the basic setting. Think of these as like tests we can do or calibrations we can do. Things like testing the knock sensors, testing for an EVAP issue, cam adjustment, adapting the fuel pump, turbocharger learned values, clutch calibration. There may be more in this list than the car can actually do. A big one people miss is timing chain elongation reset after replacement. If you do timing chains on this engine, you do need to relearn the timing chain length. All kinds of cool stuff. This is also where we used to set readiness. We would run the test for secondary air or EVAP or things, catalytic converter, oxygen sensors. All that was done in basic settings. So this should give you an idea of tests you can run and calibrations we can do, like relearning the throttle body position would be done in basic settings. Next is output tests. Output tests is another one where a lot of people miss how valuable this is. This allows us to turn things on. So if we go to our drop down menu, we can turn on a fuel injector, we can turn on or make function the exhaust flap. We can turn on the cooling fans. This allows us to do diagnosis on it. So we can turn on the secondary air pump, say, and make sure that it has full voltage. Make sure that it is actually coming on. We can power it and see if we hear any air leaks. This car has flaps in the exhaust. So when you put it in race mode, it's a little louder. We can turn those on and off. So we use output tests as a form of diagnosis. Here's one that a lot of people also miss. If you're working in the electrics module and dealing with lighting, the lighting on the modern cars is pulse width modulated. I mean, it doesn't send 12 volts to the bulb every single time. In order for you to properly check the wiring from the body control module or the electrics module to a light, you really need to output test it. It's pulse width modulated, which means it's turned on and off really, really fast. Different pulses do different things to the bulb. This is how we can make one bulb do like four different things. On the newer ones, we can select what we want to turn on if you're dealing with an older car that does do it sequentially. So it'll do them all in a row. And then you almost always have to start the car, let it run for about 10 seconds and shut it off. Otherwise it will not run that output test again. Let's go back. Next up is coding. This is the other place where VCDS is amazing. Coding used to be like four characters, 7125 or 7100, whatever it is. Now we have what's called long coding because, well, it's got a longer number. The folks at VCDS have a long coding helper which has bailed me out on so many problem cars. We click this long coding helper. What we can do is we can go in and look at what some of this coding actually means. I do not recommend you start changing your coding at all unless you know what you're doing. Please don't just go poking around in here changing stuff without one saving it first. And I did a video on how to save all that stuff. I'll link it up in the card up there. You can really mess stuff up if you just go in changing it. So if you don't know what you're doing, please do not change any of this stuff. For the sake of this video though, I do want to walk through some of the things that are options. Now, just because it's listed here, just because it's an option, doesn't mean it's going to work in the country that you're in. So we have a DSG, 7 speed, no information here, bi-directional climate control installed. On the ones that have the drop down here, we may have different options and this will show our options. So let's say we wanted to have those exhaust flaps open all the time. If we made sure that the flaps were open by like putting the car in race mode, and deselected this box, notice our coding here changed from 04 to 00. We could go exit, 
Again, zero four to zero zero. We hit do it. Now those exhaust flaps are gonna be open all the time. If that's something you're into, awesome. If not, well, that's cool too. I'm gonna to actually just change it back just for the sake of having it the way it was when we started the video. But it's just that easy to change the coding. Again, can't stress enough. Be careful doing this. So zero, zero, back to zero, four, and our coding's accepted. Anytime you change any coding, you do wanna go back and check your fault codes. Make sure you didn't accidentally set a fault code. Moving on to adaptations, these are a little bit different. So this is where we do minor tweaks to things. This is where we turned off the sound actor or turned it all the way down to zero in an adaptation. Some of these things and some of the basic settings actually kind of overlap a little bit, but these are just like minor tweaks. So we might be able to do idle correction or things like that. What you can do depends on what module you're in. This is also where on some of the older cars, things like mileage was stored. You pull that mileage out of an adaptation channel like channel nine, I think, or 11 or something like that. And you dump it into say a new instrument cluster. With the new stuff, like this is a pretty short drop down menu. Some of them have just hundreds of different things. Lighting is one that there's so many different combinations. Just like with coding, please do not go start changing adaptations. You can mess stuff up. Watch the video I did on how to save all that stuff, please, before you do any of this. Click done, go back. Now we'll go to security access. There are some functions and some adaptations and some basic settings and some coding changes for that matter that will not execute without a super secret squirrel login. Some of these logins are known. You roll your cursor over the empty box and it'll pop up with the login. Most of the new stuff is not. Some of this stuff even the dealership doesn't have and you have to call TechLine to get it. So if you're trying to do something that you know should work and it won't, it may be because there is a security login required. So there you guys go, that's pretty much it. That's the basic walkthrough on the VCDS. There is so much that this tool does beyond just what we did, but this is the basics. You've gotta know how to navigate this stuff before we start doing really advanced things. This is awesome too, because it's mirrored to what the factory scan tool does and how the factory scan tool operates. If we were to hook up the Autel, it would probably look very different than this. The information we're extracting is gonna be exactly the same, but the function, the interface, and how it's displayed is probably gonna to be totally different. Because I wanna compare, let's pull up the electrics module and see how it differs from the ECM. A Couple of things we're gonna look at real quick in this module here. When we go to coding, we notice that this is not grayed out up here at the top. That's because we have master modules of the electrics module and we have slave modules right here. So we can code the BCM, we can code WWS or RLHS all through the electrics module. So here's our coding here, check this out. We'll go back to our BCM. Now this is all zeros I'm guessing because well, they don't have the coding information for it yet. Adaptation's kind of the same thing. Look at all this adaptation. Look at how big this scroll box is. Super, super, super ton of stuff. And most of it's in German. We are gonna go back. We are not gonna save anything. Let's look at a couple of last things really quick. We have our service reminder interval reset. This opens up our instrument cluster. Here we go. So we got no warning. We don't need to reset it. If it were time, we could go ahead and reset it. Next, we'll go to OBD functions. This is generic. This is information that any scan tool will access. Before we were accessing manufacturer specific stuff, this is generic OBD. There's actually a ton of value in the information that generic OBD stores for us. I don't have any fault codes or anything, so there's not much we're going to, uh, to be able to extract out of that. Applications, we can do transport mode if we need to. Gateway installation, we've looked at some of this stuff. If our car has fiber optic system, we can do ring brake diagnosis. Controller channel map, this is where we store all of our information. Again, I already did a video on that. Data history, the VCDS toolbox has got a lot of cool things in. That's a little bit more advanced than we're talking today, so I'm not gonna dive too deep into that. Our options tab, when we first get our cable, we do need to test it and make sure that it works. That's done through here, whether you're USB or wireless like we are now. We can also change how big it is in our window size. Uh, this is set at 16, which fills up my laptop screen pretty nicely. All right, so there we have it. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple stuff. There's so much more that we're gonna be able to do with our VCDS. I'll cover those in future videos. This was all about the basics. With that, questions or comments, drop them down below. If you guys like these VCDS videos, please let me know if you want more of this kind of stuff. Otherwise, I'm not gonna do it, but if you want more of this stuff, we'll do it. Questions or comments, you know what to do. If you like the video, thumbs up, appreciate that. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.